listen to us. Cause we're happy to fall. Take a trip to the stars without fuss. On our Wyoming and South Carolina, <laughs> that both Prince Kong and myself are delighted with the decision. Because, well, we won. <laughs> and it's straight fall. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, Prince, no, no. Has my mother arrived yet? No, sir. Uh, don't forget, your new prospects, the Fidelity Chemical people, will be here. Yes, I know, at I know, at 3 o'clock. And all I've got to do is think of some way to get her out of the office before they arrive. Then I've got to pray that they haven't seen this. Oh, bonjour, Paul. Mother, why is it wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, something always happens? You saw the picture. Oh, but I miss it. Drove the astronauts off the front page. <laughs> Mom, it's, uh, it's also partly my fault. You've been working too hard lately. You're starting to look a little tired. Oh, that's not true. It's just that I don't look well in a headlock. <laughs> Mom, Mom, now I'm really very concerned. You've got to take it easy for a while, even if it's just for uh, an afternoon, this afternoon. <laughs> Look, it's a beautiful day out. Why don't you have Morton drive you into the country and pick some wildflowers? <laughs> or uh, go down to the beach and hunt for shells. You know how you like uh, to do that. Paul, I hate to interrupt, dear, but uh, would you mind if I took the afternoon on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how terribly busy we are, but an old friend's been calling. That's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Oh, you're such an understanding partner. Oh. Thank you, dear. Oh, my God, I don't want you to worry, because I've got everything under control. Of course you have, dear. <laughs> Including the Fidelity Chemical Account of Cinch. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come. I'm ready to go out of my mind. Well, Liz, suppose you just tell me what the trouble is. Well, the trouble is Brewster. Brewster? Your son? No, Robbie's my son. Brewster is a rooster. Um, Brewster is a rooster? I'm stuck with him. You bought a rooster? Well, how did I know? I bought Robbie a cute little Easter chick. Could have grown up to be a hen. <laughs> or a rooster. You know, I've been around. <laughs> anyway, you know it. At the crack of dawn, Brewster sounds off, and now the neighbors are threatening me with everything from a lawsuit to a lynching. The way I see it, you have two choices. You can either make your neighbors go to bed right after dinner, or you can get rid of the rooster. That's my problem. If I touch even a feather on Brewster's hide, it'll break Robbie's heart. Oh, for two days, maybe. Then he'd get over it. Anybody can get over a rooster. Hens do. <laughs> oh, it is a rooster. Robbie, you remember Mrs. Marshall. Hello, Robbie. Hi. Say hello, Brewster. <laughs> Any day I'm expecting a complaint from Pasadena. She's not going to try to take Brewster away, is she? Oh, no, honey, don't you worry. Mrs. Marshall's going to help us keep Brewster. Now, Liz, I never said that. Well, you are a lawyer. Yeah, but not for roosters, I mean. <laughs> Trisha, you mean you aren't going to take the case? I thought you were always for the underdog. But this underdog crows at dawn, and there's a law. <laughs> Mrs. Fielding, that ruddy rooster did it again this 
this morning. We beat the sun by six minutes, 547. <laughs> Again, Brewster, we better get out of here. I had to move out here for this. I left New York because those blasted taxi horns kept me up all night. No, Mr. Craig. I've been in California for two weeks now, and for two weeks I haven't had one good night's sleep. Every night when the late show goes off, that miserable rooster comes on. <laughs> Madam, it is not funny. I'm sorry, but I never thought I'd hear two grown people arguing about a rooster in Beverly Hills. Well, stay out of this. I don't intend to get mixed up with a bunch of hens, too. I beg you your us. pardon? By what right do you come barging into a private home threatening Mrs. Fielding, her son, and her son's beloved pet? What are you, a door-to-door -door earplug salesman? I just happen to be Mrs. Fielding's attorney. Good. Then you tell your client to get rid of that big mouth chicken or I'll get rid of it for her. You lay one finger on that bird and I'll have you up on charges before the Humane Society. <laughs> Madam, you've had your chance. The next time I see you, it'll be in court. <laughs> Why, that, that big blowhard, he makes more noise than a whole herd of roosters. <laughs> so you're taking the case. Whatever made you think I wouldn't. <laughs> Nelson Craig of Fidelity Chemicals to see Mr. Marshall. Oh, he's expecting you. Right this way, sir. Mr. Marshall, Mr. Craig. Good afternoon, Mr. Craig. I'm all ready for you, sir. I've uh, gone over all your legal files and I... Forget it, Marshall. I've got something more important for you to handle right now. Yes, sir. You name it and we'll get it done. I want you to get rid of a rooster. Certainly, sir. No problem. Did you say rooster? Are you hard of hearing? Now I want action and I want it fast. But, sir, I've worked out a complete prospectus on Fidelity Chemicals. Marshal, when I moved my factory out to the West Coast, I heard that you were the kind of law firm that got things done. Well, I've got a rooster next door. I want fricasseed. <laughs> Legally or otherwise. Well, here's the name and address, so start suing. What grounds? Crowing without a license. <laughs> what do I know? Find out. I want people around me who make things happen. Well... You went to Harvard, eh? Uh, oh, that. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I did. I went to Yale. <laughs> Mrs. Marshall, I thought you were taking the afternoon off. I came close to it. If anybody wants me, I'll be in the library. <clears throat> Under public nuisances. Relax, Mr. Craig. I guarantee you I'll get rid of your rooster. I'll find charges immediately on grounds of public nuisance. Well, I don't care how you do it, just do it. But you'd better be on your toes. That rooster has a lawyer, too. <laughs> well, I'll be in touch with you, Mr. Kerr. Yeah, old man. <laughs> Allie, I'll be in the library. I've got to see how Blackstone feels about chicken. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Well, I, I meant to stay out of the office, Paul, but this new case came up. Did you get the Fidelity account? Oh, well, it, uh, it seems at first our patience and resources are being put on trial with a little personal matter. Oh, well, that seems pretty ridiculous. Didn't you tell them you went to Harvard? They went to Yale. <laughs> what are you working on? Oh, a very provocative case, a new client. Oh, do I know? I don't think so. What's his name? Brewster. George Brewster? Nobody you know, dear. I don't think he went to Harvard. He's a sort of rural character. <laughs> what are you looking for? Well, oh, me? Oh, no, no, I just need a few more references for the Fidelity case. It's something to bother you with. Indiana reports, 1949. Yes, what do you want with it? Well, can you tell me someplace else I can find Pritikin versus Gawk? Pritikin versus Gawk? Uh, it's the same case that I'm working on. That's a, a public nuisance case oh, about... Oh, take the book, darling. I'll find it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that's the most horrible thought. Your rural character wouldn't happen to be a, a rooster. Owned by a, a Mrs. A Mrs. Uh, Elizabeth Field. Come on out. 
We can't. We're in Africa. Never mind over. Okay. Hey, it's nice here in Africa. Why don't we all have a little chat? Okay, but let's go over to Brewster's hut. He's tired. We've been on safari all day. Well, lead on, Bawana. <laughs> We're surrounded by crocodiles. Oh. <laughs> Don't step on the snake. Oh. <laughs> Going first and check for savage beasts. You do that. <laughs> Is they okay? Come on in. <laughs> cramped, isn't it? Not like in Africa for real. I can't live in Africa for real. I have to go to school. Don't I? Yeah, but you know, you and Brewster are absolutely right. Making believe you live in Africa. Because it's just what a rooster needs. The country, the green plains, the wide open spaces. He sure does. Well, then, don't you think it's wrong to make him live in Beverly Hills? Why? He was born here. But does he belong here? You know, all the roosters in the world live in the country. Because they're not as smart as Brewster. Do you know how smart he is? Even when he's asleep, he knows the sun's coming up. He doesn't need an alarm clock. Yeah, well, from what I hear, neither does Mr. Craig. Oh, him. Now, look. Supposing Mr. Craig owned Brewster, and he woke you up every morning at 6 o'clock. That's when I get up anyway. I have to go to school. Don't I? Yeah, you do. You have to learn... All about history and arithmetic and why roosters should live in the country where they can crow all they want to. He doesn't know anybody in the country. Well, we can introduce him around. <laughs> Patricia? What are you doing in there? Losing. <laughs> Patricia, Mr. Craig is here with the summons. Oh, I'll take care of him and be a cinch after your son, Robbie. But your son, Paul, is with him. Oh, let me know how it comes out. <laughs> but you can't leave now. I've got to. He doesn't know Paul's my son. Oh, but he knows you're my lawyer. Or aren't you? <laughs> now, Mr. Craig, I'm sure we can settle this out of court if you'll just let me talk to the woman. Will you stop shilly scallying, Marshal? Oh, your partner must be the powerhouse of the outfit. Now, if you're going to get squeamish about this, maybe you better let him handle it. Mr. Craig, I think there's something I ought to tell you about my partner. Well, if it isn't the chicken law. Mr. Uh... Craig. What a pleasure. See what I mean? She's not only now, impertinent... Mr. Craig, I suppose you let me handle this. All right, go ahead and handle it. This is Mr. Marshall, a real lawyer. We've met. What are you waiting for? Give her the paper. Why don't we just all sit down and discuss the matter calmly and sanely, like... Sanely? <laughs> that woman threatened to drag me up before the Humane Society just because I had the gall to expect a good night's sleep. Come on, give her the paper. Mrs. Fielding, this is a true copy of a complaint my client has filed with the city attorney. You are maintaining a public nuisance just under the... Just a minute. Let him finish. I will not let him finish. It has not been established that a rooster, per se, is a public nuisance. This is Beverly Hills, not Sunnybrook Farm. That animal disturbs the peace every time he crows, and I've got a signed petition here to prove it. Come on, show her. Uh, that's right, ma'am. Uh, ma ma My client has obtained 35 signatures from sleepless neighbors. And I'd have gotten 500 if I could have kept the others awake long enough to write their names. I thought you were going to let him handle it. You're her lawyer. Don't interfere with my lawyer. Handle it. <laughs> this building, you have 24 hours to dispose of your rooster or appear at a hearing before the city attorney. Let me see that. Ha! <laughs> I'll tell you what she means. The complaint alleges that Mrs. Fielding is maintaining a public nuisance, and she is not. 
The rooster just happens to be the exclusive property of a Mr. Robert Fielding. Who just happens to be a minor. Then why doesn't it say so in the complaint? <laughs> I'm sorry, Counselor. The notice, as drawn, is invalid, and we cannot accept it. I mean, how can you talk sense to a noodlehead? <laughs> noodlehead. Noodlehead. Are you going to stand there and let him call me names? Why shouldn't he? He's my lawyer. He's being paid to back me up. <laughs> I'll say it again. You're a noodlehead. Now, Mrs. Craig, if you will just calm down. Calm down? Are you going to let this man call your mother names? <laughs> Mr. Craig, if you don't mind my mother. Baby. Little heads can have babies. Marshall and Marshall. Holy horse feathers. So you're the junior partner of a chicken lawyer. Chickens are better clients than fat heads. Oh, yeah, Now, Mr. Craig, you are out of line. My mother was merely trying to help a friend. Don't dare apologize. If I'm a chicken lawyer, I'm the best in the business. I wanted a lawyer who made things happen. But not to me! <laughs> Marshall, on behalf of the firm, I want to thank you for your help. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Instead of giving Robbie a cute little Easter chick, I should have given him a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> oh, this is not your fault. Why couldn't Robbie have asked me for a dog? Or even a cat? But not my son. He's got to have a, a kooky pet. Something different. Something no one else has got. Oh, what a mess. Paul's gonna lose his client. Robbie's gonna lose... Liz, what did you just say about Robbie? That he's always got to have something different. Pat, I tell you, this kid is... Liz, if we could possibly get Robbie to give up his rooster, do you know, do you know anybody that would take it? Well, Robbie's cousin Dickie is always asking Brewster to spend the night. You'd never get Robbie to give him up. I just might. But we'll have to work fast because the city attorney's meeting is tomorrow, and this is what we're going to do. <laughs> Don't forget, Marshal, just because you're handling this ridiculous case has nothing whatsoever to do with the fidelity account. Look, Mr. Craig, we can do a top job for you. My mother may get a bit uh, carried away at times, but she's got a brilliant record in corporate litigation. We want Brewster! We want Brewster! We want Brewster! We want Order! Order! What happened to the poultry lovers? Please read the complaint. Thank you, Mr. Prother. <clears throat> Whereas, on or about October the 1st, a peaceful urban community has been shaken out of its bed each dawn by a crowing rooster. Mr. Prother, <clears throat> if I may interrupt my learned colleague, <laughs> the complaint, I'm sure, is beautiful with rhetoric worthy of Aristotle himself. But as of a few moments ago, it is completely without foundation. Somebody killed the rooster? No! Alive <laughs> and happy. Yeah! Order! <laughs> He's just trying to stall. Read the complaint. Mr. Brooks. Oh, the whole matter's been settled. Then what am I doing here? <laughs> it just happened, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, how come you call him Mr. Prothrow? We're in great shape. There's no doubt in my mind that your distinguished counsel could establish without a doubt that a crowing rooster in Beverly Hills does constitute a public nuisance. But, Mr. Cray, how would you fill the aching void in the life of a lonely and only child? The answer is obvious. Another animal, a dog perhaps, or a cat. But Robbie is an unusual boy, and only an unusual pet appeals to him. Our job then was to find a suitable and silent substitute for Brewster the Rooster so that peas could reign once again in Beverly Hills. <laughs> well, we've done it. Brewster's moved away. And he's now living happily with Cousin Dicky. Yeah! <laughs> Dismissed. 
Just a second. You can't close the hearing. I demand proof. Your Honor, Mr. Whoever... Charlie! <laughs> One. Why didn't I told you to keep him out of here? I should argue with a hungry dragon. <laughs> well, Mr. Craig, I guess we've reached the parting of the ways. Parting of the ways? Oh no, you don't. You put in a bid for the fidelity account, and you're getting it. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I wish we might have. You two make quite a team. You're a young man with spunk. And your mother really makes things happen. But from now on, it's going to be to somebody else, not to me. Greg, you've got a deal. Let's have a big smile, huh? Smile, Sir Bester. But I'm forced to admit, Mother, Clyde Beatty couldn't have handled the case any better. How can I stay angry at the maddest, most unorthodox mother the man ever had? Oh, thank you, dear. Well, there's only one thing I'm not quite clear about. Where does Robbie's cousin Dickie live? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea, but I hope it's Zanzibar. Amen. <laughs> Good night, dear. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Mom. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cousin Dickie lives here. <laughs> the Gene Arthur Show, brought to you by General Foods, makers of top choice burger for dogs, and new shake and bake for chicken. Is it wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, something always happens? You saw the picture. Oh, but I miss it. Drove the astronauts off the front page. <laughs> well, Mom, it's, uh, it's also partly my fault. You've been working too hard lately. You're starting to look a little tired. Oh, that's not true. It's just that I don't look well in a headlock. <laughs> Mom, Mom, no, I'm really very concerned. You've got to take it easy for a while, even if it's just for uh, an afternoon. This afternoon. <laughs> Look, it's a beautiful day out. Why don't you have Morton drive you into the country and pick some wildflowers? <laughs> or uh, go down to the beach and hunt for shells. You know how you like uh, to do that. Paul, I hate to interrupt, dear. But uh, would you mind if I took the afternoon on? <laughs> well, I know how terribly busy we are, but an old friend's been calling. That's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Oh, you're such an understanding partner. Oh. Thank you, dear. Oh, my man, I don't want you to worry, because I've got everything under control. Of course you have, dear. Including the Fidelity chemical account, it's cinch. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come. I'm ready to go out of my mind. Well, Liz, suppose you just tell me what the trouble is. Well, the trouble is Brewster. Brewster? Your son? No, Robbie's my son. Brewster is a rooster. <laughs> um, Brewster is a rooster? I'm stuck with him. You bought a rooster? Well, how did I know? I bought Robbie a cute little Easter chick. Could have grown up to be a hen. <laughs> or a rooster. <laughs> you know, I've been around. <laughs> anyway, you know it. At the crack of dawn, Brewster sounds off, and now the neighbors are threatening me with everything from a lawsuit to a lynching. The way I see it, you have two choices. 
Relax, Mr. Craig. I guarantee you I'll get rid of your rooster. I'll file down charges immediately on grounds of public nuisance. Well, I don't care how you do it, just do it. But you'd better be on your toes. That rooster has a lawyer, too. Okay, well, I'll be in touch with you, Mr. Craig. Yale men. Sally, I'll be in the library. I've got to see how Blackstone feels about chicken. Oh, huh. Well, I, I meant to stay out of the office, Paul, but this new case came up. Did you get the fidelity account? Oh, well, it, uh, it seems at first our patience and resources are being put on trial with a little personal matter. Oh, that seems pretty ridiculous. Didn't you tell them you went to Harvard? They went to Yale. What are you working on? Oh, a very provocative case, a new client. Oh, do I know? I don't think so. What's his name? Brewster. George Brewster? Nobody you know, dear. I don't think he went to Harvard. He's a sort of rural character. <laughs> what are you looking for? Well, oh, me? Oh, no, no, I just need a few more references for the Fidelity case. It's something to bother you with. <laughs> Indiana reports, 1949. Yes, what do you want with it? Well, can you tell me someplace else I can find Pritikin versus Gawk? Pritikin versus Gawk? That's the same case that I'm working on. That's a, a public nuisance case oh, about... Oh, take the book, darling. I'll find it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> just had the most horrible thought. Your rural character wouldn't happen to be a, a rooster. Owned by a, a Mrs. A Mrs. Uh, Elizabeth Field. and South Carolina, <laughs> that both Prince Kong and myself are delighted with the decision. Because, well, we won. <laughs> and it's straight fall. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, Prince, no, no. Has my mother arrived yet? No, sir. Uh, don't forget, your new prospects, the Fidelity Chemical people, will be here. Yes, I know, I know, at 3 o'clock. And all I've got to do is think of some way to get her out of the office before they arrive. Then I've got to pray that they haven't seen this. Are you a door-to-door earplug salesman? I just happen to be Mrs. Fielding's attorney. Good. Then you tell your client to get rid of that big mouth chicken or I'll get rid of it for her. You lay one finger on that bird and I'll have you up on charges before the Humane Society. <laughs> Madam, you've had your chance. The next time I see you, it'll be in court. <laughs> <laughs> that big blowhard, he makes more noise than a whole herd of roosters. So you're taking the case. Whatever made you think I wouldn't? <laughs> Nelson Craig of Fidelity Chemicals to see Mr. Marshall. Oh, he's expecting you. Right this way, sir. 
Marshal, Mr. Craig. Good afternoon, Mr. Craig. I'm all ready for you, sir. I've uh, gone over all your legal files and I... Forget it, Marshal. I've got something more important for you to handle right now. Yes, sir. You name it and we'll get it done. I want you to get rid of a rooster. Certainly, sir. No problem. <laughs> you say rooster? Are you hard of hearing? Now I want action and I want it fast. But, sir, I've worked out a complete prospectus on fidelity chemicals. Marshal, when I moved my factory out to the West Coast, I heard that you were the kind of law firm that got things done. Well, I've got a rooster next door. I want fricasseed. <laughs> Legally or otherwise. Well, here's the name and address, so start suing. What grounds? Crowing without a license. <laughs> How do I know? Find out. I want people around me who make things happen. Well. You went to Harvard, eh? Uh, oh, Dad, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, I did. I went to Yale. <laughs> Mrs. Marshall, I thought you were taking the afternoon off. I came close to it. If anybody wants me, I'll be in the library. <clears throat> Under public nuisances. You can either make your neighbors go to bed right after dinner, or you can get rid of the rooster. That's my problem. If I touch even a feather on Brewster's hide, it'll break Robbie's heart. Oh, for two days, maybe. Then he'd get over it. Anybody can get over a rooster. Hens do. <laughs> oh, it is a rooster. Robbie, you remember Mrs. Marshall. Hello, Robbie. Hi. Say hello, Brewster. <laughs> I'm expecting a complaint from Pasadena. She's not going to try to take Brewster away, is she? Oh, no, honey, don't you worry. Mrs. Marshall's going to help us keep Brewster. Now, Liz, I never said that. Well, you are a lawyer. Yeah, but not for roosters, I mean. <laughs> Trisha, you mean you aren't going to take the case? I thought you were always for the underdog. Oh, but this underdog crows at dawn, and there's a law. <laughs>